Uh, second item is adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with Stantec for design services for the lower San Bruno Avenue medians project in an amount not to exceed $83,946 and appropriating $42,500 from gas tax and $42,500 from Measure A funds. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Will Anderson, Staff Engineer, Public Services Department. San Bruno Avenue is a major arterial street that connects residential areas and employment centers such as Walmart and YouTube with nearby retail centers such as Bay Hill Shopping Center and businesses on Camino Plaza and along El Camino Real. San Bruno Avenue also serves as a direct route to the transit corridor area. The Capital Improvement Program contains the Street Medians and Grand Boulevard Improvements Project which via four previous projects has rehabilitated medians along the upper portion of San Bruno Avenue between Skyline Boulevard and I-280, the entire length of El Camino Real, and one median on San Bruno Avenue from El Camino Real to Elm Avenue. The City Council should be recognized for establishing the overall program that has had great visible impact to both residents and visitors alike as well as reducing the amount of irrigation water used. We now have an opportunity to put one more piece of the puzzle in place. The Lower San Bruno Avenue Medians Project is a continuation of the overall program and will rehabilitate medians and upgrade pedestrian access along San Bruno Avenue from Elm Avenue to I-280. Similar to previous projects, the city has secured grant funding to be used for construction. The grant amount for this phase is $735,000. Cost to the city will include local match funding for construction in an amount of about $95,000 and covering the cost for design. Over the course of the program, and including the current $735,000 grant, the city has received over $2.5 million in grant funds for median upgrades. Project scope for the Lower San Bruno Avenue portion includes re-landscape medians with more drought resistant plants, replacing spray irrigation with drip irrigation to conserve water, and replacing hardscape paver blocks. This landscaping work was designed as part of the overall master plan for the corridor and the plans that were previously prepared will be incorporated into the bid documents. But what's new are improvements to create a more pedestrian friendly environment. The proposed contract with Stantec will address design issues such as new curb ramps and speed radar display signs. A feasibility study will also be prepared to determine the feasibility of stalling other pedestrian improvements such as refuge islands at the medians installing advanced warning pedestrian crossing signs, and modifying traffic signals to account for slower pedestrian walking speeds, and adding dedicated left turn signals to reduce conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles. The designer's work will also include preparing plans and specs for the final scope of work and providing technical assistance during bidding and construction. City staff chose Stantec through a request for proposals process that included sending the RFP to civil and traffic engineering firms in the city's database and also advertising on the city website. Four proposals were received and based on staff evaluations, Stantec was determined to be the most technically qualified firm. For funding, the current CIP has a design appropriation of $30,000. Because the proposed contract is for approximately 84000 staff is recommending that council appropriate an additional $85,000 into this project, evenly split between gas tax and Measure A funds to cover the cost of the design and city staff costs for project management. Next year's CIP will include the grant funding and the city local match funds for construction. To meet grant fund deadlines, a construction contract has to be awarded before July 2016 and we anticipate construction to start in the summer of 2016 and be complete
by fall. Uh, so in conclusion, staff recommends council authorize the city manager to execute the contract for design services with Stantec. That's uh, my presentation. I'm available to answer any questions. Any questions for staff at this time? Ken? Yeah. I served on a subcommittee with this with uh, former Mayor Franzella, and we reviewed pretty much all the, the approved me, uh, median strips that, are, that you spoke of, San Bruno Avenue and El Camino. We work with Calendar Associates, a, a well-renowned landscape architect. I was surprised to see that now we're dealing with engineers, civil engineers. I understand that we've got some quirks in our medians and things, and you know, through experience, through the experience run with calendar associates, we found out that why certain things were done over the years, and we've mitigated that. Now we've got a new, a new consultant, new designer. One was calendar one in the running, and two. Uh, what are we doing as far as landscaping? I mean, is that going to be you now farmed out to a landscape architect? And three, I mean, are these medians now going to look, I know they're going to look different because now we're looking at pedestrian, uh, uh, pedestrian uh, amenities and things, which none of the other, uh, none of the other medians have. So we're, we're, as much as I love, you know, want, want to finish this up and redo all these medians, we're sort of changing direction now, and you know, how can you speak to that? The landscape design is prepared by calendar. What we are adding to the mix are the pedestrian improvements, such as the access ramps and possible modifications to the traffic signals, but the landscape was actually included in a previous median phase projects. Uh, so we did not have the funding available to construct all of that, so we rolled over that design into this project. Um, so the landscape, irrigation, plans, and specs are prepared by Calendar Associates. And, and I would just mention, you probably remember that during that time that you and former Mayor Francella were working on this, the intent was to create a uniform appearance and in particular on San Bruno Avenue to transition from those, from the design aesthetic that is present above uh, 280 uh, along San Bruno Avenue to use the portion below from 280 to El Camino to tra transition from that more formal um, appearance and feel of the landscape treatment to the more formal um, that is in place along El Camino. Um, one island has been completed and the design aesthetic, the landscape treatment previously designed by calendar and that will be used in this project um, continues that same aesthetic as is currently in place in that first median above El Camino. So the only real addition or the only real change is to uh, make sure that we have all of the civil engineering requirements met in the design and also to address um, some improvements to make that um, corridor more pedestrian and frankly traffic friendly to, to really improve the overall circulation in that corridor. And, and if I could just follow up, yes, we do have one median strip, and I mentioned this to Ray, from El Camino to Elm, and that aesthetic isn't looking good right now. The, uh, there's weeds popping up all over through the, uh, through the paving. So I would hope that we could set an example saying that we're going to maintain them and then with the new ones coming in. And then I also asked Ray, what about, what about the median that's under 280? I mean, are we allowed to do anything there? It's got the hideous old lava rock, red lava rock in there. And I realize that possibly nothing can grow, but I'd like, I'd like that to be addressed, if we could, because it's obviously not part of the scope here. Uh, Councilman McBarrow, we, we certainly will take a look at that and see what kind of coordination is required. As you said, it's under the freeway, so it's difficult to uh, make it as 
nice as the other uh, medians, but uh, we will take a look at that. Uh, we're also looking at that area across from it and that triangular shape that SFPUC had. So we're coordinating that with Caltrans and SFPUC. And while we're doing that, we would address the area under the freeway. But this is an area that I personally walk a lot in, and I'm very concerned about the pedestrians. Uh, cars coming out from the off-ramp, and this is a downhill, and the speeding is an issue. We want to make sure that because of the Bay Hill area, the pedestrian activity there is, is, is protected and as safe as possible. So this project is, is a, it's an excellent project for that. And we're hoping that it will, it will be a, a very, very positive impact on that whole area in terms of pedestrian access and movement. Through Chair, and I know it's an ongoing project, uh, but just wanted to remind that I hope that we're still uh, working with our parks staff as far as what is the most effective and efficient uh, for them. So they, as far as staff costs and time that it takes for maintenance, for safety, uh, obviously they're the ones that are out there every day. They know best too. So I hope that we're using them as a resource as I hope we have through this whole project as far as what works best. Um, and then obviously I hope that whatever we're putting in, we look at it as for a cost effectiveness and we don't have a median that has weeds because uh, what's worse is investing and then not keeping it up. So whatever we put in, let's make sure we can maintain and we have the staff and uh, whatever best avenues we have for their efficiency. Okay. Anyone else? Action by the council. I'll, I'd like to adopt the resolution. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar. Aye. Mayor Ruang. Aye.